And, you know, you get to answer the questions and stuff for us, Wendy. Now, one of the questions is, they say that you found this project, tell me, at the age of 19? Yes. Is that correct? Now, what was it about this role that made you want to play Miss Wednesday? I just really love the scripts. I love the different dynamics uh, that it was telling as far as a young woman coming of age and trying to find her identity and what it means to escape her past and to create a better future. I thought those were all things that everybody could relate to, no matter what background they're from. I think we all are going through uh, that in our own way. Um, and then just the fact that the character was so different from me. Yeah. You know, I did, for the, I started out acting as a kid, of course, and there's only a certain kind of role that will be available to you as a child entertainer. You're not always going to find something that is stretching you uh, character-wise. You know, Akilah and the Bee was a, a, a great role, but it was one of the only roles that really kind of took me through a lot of changes acting-wise. Uh, and so after I came from doing Nickelodeon, I really wanted something that would challenge me and allow me to dig deeper into myself um, and so I could experience a greater, uh, have a greater experience with acting and entertainment. <laughs> What's the message though, that you want, you know, to viewers to get from this um, movie? Um, that life is not about material things. I think we are so mis, uh, misinformed, especially when you grew up in poverty like Wednesday did. Everybody assumes that the way you get to happiness is through money. The way you get to happiness is through having material things and doing all this and none of that. That was just all a lie. And we saw that in the movie is that it's not about the money. It's about who loves you and who you love back. Who can be there for you and who you can be there for? Who, the people that really actually care about you. And Wednesday already has that. You know, she already had that with Nikki. But she was searching for all these outside validations. And that's truly what brought her strength. And so for young people watching the film, I would hope that that's what they, what they would see. Which is that instead of searching outside for the validation that you're seeking, search inside. And the people all right, Christine, honey. All right, Christine, honey. This was a great movie, honey. Did you say I wrote and directed this movie. How did it just come about? That's the, that's the million dollar question. Um, you know, Pimp for me um, has been a, a story that's been with me for a very long time. Um, I wanted to do a woman's uh, survival of the fittest kind of movie. And I grew up in Brooklyn, so I, you know, had a very interesting childhood uh, where I was, you know, experiencing all cultures from all parts of the world. And one day after film school, I met a female pimp, and I was, I know that sounds crazy, but I did, and I said, wow, this actually exists, this whole world, and I was so curious, and when I asked her if I can come in and, and see what it's like on a day-to-day -day, you know, basis and what their survival and their struggle was, I went in there and I saw things that I thought, wow, this is so cool, it's, the gender thing was flipped, and I thought, wow, a woman pimp, this is... We haven't seen this, and as a filmmaker, we're always so curious to go to worlds we've never been to, right? And that we're afraid of, and we go, I don't know, I don't know anything about it. But I knew that I came from a very cultured background, and you know, I, I grew up, you know, with immigrant parents, and we struggled. And I saw, I had a sick mom my whole life, so I saw the female survival and the struggle, and and then I was connecting the dots, and then I thought, I'm gonna start putting this together, and. The character of Wednesday, you know, when people make movies, you're not making movies for the genre. You're making movies because of the characters and the people and what the messages are in that world. So when you watch Pimp, you go, yeah, this is relatable. I, I know all my friends watch the movie and they're like, man, that's me and my mom or that's, you know, me and love. And oh, I was sitting, you know, think about money and I put it over love. So there's a lot of really deep thinking in it. Well, how was Kiki chosen to play this part? How was she chosen to play Wednesday? <laughs> Well, I'll give you the, uh, the, 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 the private, you know, oh, okay. story later, another story, okay. no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Kiki wrote the pimp that like I actually met, and I was like, oh, you're pimp too? That's Hollywood, because all, all of Hollywood is full of pimps. I know, I know. Oh. Uh, no, we're kidding, guys, we're kidding. Now, Kiki, um, you know, it's, uh, I'll give you the short version. You know, first of all, she's an incredible actor. You guys see that in, she has tremendous range. When I had seen her work, but at first, when her agency, you know, sent approached me for Kiki, I thought, last I had seen her, and she was just so cute, and um, I didn't see the the tough side, right? And then Kiki was super amazing with her mom. They read the script, and they went and made a little scene from the movie, and Kiki played in it and did the voiceover, and they sent me Kiki in the role. And when I saw it, I said, oh, shit. This kid is, has something, you know, way outside the box that I, I wanted to sit down with her and 
tap into that. And then when I met Kiki, I, I knew at 19, I said, wow, she's young. You know, because there is a, a growth you have at, you know, after 21, 22, you know, that's a little different. But what I saw about Kiki, you guys, that for me was the, the beautiful, like this, that was it. I literally hired her after we sat and did the scenes. I was like, you got the role. Like, I mean, I just I knew it. I never look at another actor. And <clears throat> Kiki has something that's beautiful that a lot of actresses don't have. And I say this because I know she's going to do incredible things. So I just want to tap into that. But she has a beautiful balance of masculine and feminine. And uh, a lot of us have that. Some of us are afraid of it. Some of us put it away, and then it comes up in certain parts of our lives, and we're like, "What out. But Kiki's not afraid of it, and she knows how to play with the levels. Yeah. I mean, she scared me on on set a couple of times. I was like, "Are you a character in my talk? And she, you know, like, it, you know, she's that good. So, yeah. And 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 every actor dreams to transform, and not many can. That Kiki can do a million things. She sure can, because she played that role, honey. Yeah, she can. I was like, is that Kiki? <laughs> yeah. So, Christine, final question. What do you want the audience to get from this movie? We have to ask Kiki so much. Um, there's one important message in the movie, and I think it's, uh, you know, maybe a personal experience for me. I and it, and it deals with, you know, a lot of what Kiki was saying about her and her mom, you know, as, especially being gay, you know, when you, when you have to face your, your, your reality of who you are, be in your skin, right? And then you think, oh shit, I, I can't love somebody, like, or I'm going to be judged, or, um, you know, there's a fear that comes with that, that's horrible. And one of the important scenes in the movie, it, when Kiki leaves her mom in the, in the jail, that I think is a, the big message for me, is that she breaks that cycle of thinking. You know, her, her, her character just decides no, because she's not gonna have it. And love, you know, the Nikki character was always there in love, but you know, we failed to see it along the way as the character you know, makes decisions. But I think at that mo moment, it was the game changer. And sometimes in our life, we, we, we are in this cycle and we repeat these cycles and these patterns. And you know, a lot of the you know the gay community, LGBT community, you're afraid to be who you are, and it all stems from your family upbringing. And that's why Lee came on in the film too. You know, Lee's a proud gay man. He's you know he's you know he saw the voice of this, and he and he and I discussed it. It's breaking that cycle and being who you are. You have to be your truest, authentic self, or you are missing the reason why you are here in the first place. Because God is, we are all His children. In the end, it doesn't matter where you come so from, true. but we are all going to the same place, and we are here to teach people to tolerate, to not judge, to be loved. Coming films that we can look forward to after seeing this film that might be comparable to it. Hmm, it's, these scripts don't come around often. I'm gonna tell you that, it, they do not come around often. So I cannot tell you that I've seen anything that's comparable to uh, the challenges that I faced um, and the stretches that I was able to uh, express with this character. I can't tell you that because you know they, they are far and few between especially unfortunately with females. You don't always see us getting the opportunity to have characters that have those levels of transformations but if it is out there if I can play a Ugandan slave <laughs> message you'll see it. If there's an opportunity for me to play you know an Iraqi military sergeant I'll be there, you know what I'm saying? So if it's there, I will find it because that's who I am. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to play different characters. You know, I love to dig deep. I love people. I love telling stories. Um, that's very important to me. Well, I think that your talent